see, first of all, there can't be just one change. There are going to be series of changes depending on the end use. One thing I would like to mention is about biofuels. The enhanced use of biofuels, because first of all, they are renewables. You can generate them. And second is that it can also lead to local economy development. Biofuels, it's not something new. We are talking about this for decades together. And we have also shown it used before the fossil fuels were discovered. All the palaces in India, they were lit by Jetrofa oil. Where we have, or rather on the way we have lost use of these because of the ease and economic viability of fossil fuels. What we need to do now is that biofuels can be generated at local level and utilized at local level and the way you use it will vary depending on the application. I think one of the biggest changes which we should be looking at is actually using whatever we are consuming, whether it is in the form of energy, materials, anything in a most efficient manner. So to me, resource efficiency, energy efficiency, I come from that background. So that's something which I believe should be the first thing which everybody should practice. And that ultimately is going to help reduce your environmental footprint in all possible ways. I think the one major policy change that we look forward to, how to gain the net zero emissions. And that is one of the biggest gain that the environment would have in, the, in our lifetime. Because it would benefit biodiversity, it would benefit production forestry, and it would also benefit environment in, a, in, in, total, in total. The earth is what we all have in common. So we should also consider a common problem. So India is doing really well while taking their actions in terms of solar action plan, state action plan, even industries are taking voluntary actions and doing really well to decarbonize. But they all are facing a major and common issue of finance while taking all these actions in place. So when we talk about regulations and policy, one thing should be taken care of is to come up with a financial regulations in India. So there should be green finance regulation in place to achieve all our targets on time. One positive change I would like to see is uh, reuse and recycling of uh, crop residues uh, uh, which offer multiple environmental benefits. So the one scientific change that I'd like to see which could possibly create a positive impact on the environment is being proactive in anticipating and addressing uh, some of the possible potential uh, negative impacts on the environment that occur when we move towards economic development at a rapid pace. Well, as a researcher, I feel having spatial and temporal data could go a long way in managing our natural resources in a more sustainable manner. Uh, as they say, whatever can be measured can be managed better. But many a times there is a sheer lack of data or confidentiality issues when it comes to sharing of data. So even global issues like climate change need local adaptation measures and for that we need local data which is mi missing. I feel as a researcher uh, we could use something called as citizen science which can uh, which means uh, basically to uh, build awareness, uh, build skill and involve the locals in collecting simple data like uh, stream or river flows, water quality, uh, documenting biodiversity in the vicinity etc or sometimes it is about presenting the existing data for example uh, how the meteorological data weather or climate can be visualized better uh, which can be more useful understandable uh, impactful for users and general broader public so for this I feel uh, options such as Internet of Things uh, open source softwares can come in handy. From the agriculture aspect, there is huge GHG emission which is going from agriculture. And this GHG emission is coming from the sectors where we are developing chemical fertilizers or where we are investing fuels towards their development and transportation. So some alternative measures have to be developed or adopted where 
the size of application of these chemical fertilizers can be reduced. Terry has developed in this direction two different technologies. One is nano fertilizer. The other technology that Terry has developed is bio fertilizers. Major challenge in biofuel is that it should be economically viable. Economic viability is proving to be a challenge. And that is largely because we are looking at the fuel separately. We don't have that much of land available, but we are also looking at algae. In aquatic system, carbon dioxide is sequenced and biomass is produced. It is faster than any of the terrestrial systems. And we have algal strains which have as much as 45% on dry weight basis as lipid. Not just lipids, because it is also a source of nutraceuticals. It's a good in protein, it is rich in protein and therefore can be used as kettle feed. And especially if you go for marine strain cultivation, you are using the seawater. So there is no further pressure on land, there is no pressure in terms of water so it becomes something which is win-win biggest challenge here is within ourselves we how do we really change ourselves in our day-to-day -day routine how do we make our children ensure that they don't keep their acs at 19 degree or 20 degree centigrade and they see that yes we are putting it at 24 degree centigrade how do we ensure that whatever we are eating we don't take so much what we can't eat basically you need to ensure that yes we consume whatever we need. The biggest challenge here is to understand the diverse aspects of net zero and that is not only carbon sequestration but understanding and communicating whole range of co-benefits to the environment, to the local communities and also addressing the needs of local, local communities as well as societies at large. Uh, so when we talk about green finance regulations, there are many challenges that we are facing. So one major challenge is that we are not looking at the bottom-up approach. So when we talk about bottom-up approach, we should see the local problems that industries are facing, that solar panels when we are installing it in local villages that they are facing, different stakeholders are facing. And we all should come together and discuss what top-down approach and bottom-up approach should take place and relatively we can have our definitions defined and post that we can come up with the proper regulations of green finance in place and that will be easily mobilized for different actions to take our climate actions and to make our environment better. Currently farmers uh, burn these crop residues uh, after they harvest their crop so this is a major uh, challenge and to change this uh, practice uh, one issue is more in terms of uh, it's labor intensive and time consuming. So that is one major hindrance. And also there is a, a issue of uh, the current technological options being uh, costly. Uh, so there's an economic uh, angle to this. So the main challenge I would uh, believe is being inclusive and uh, equitable in our climate action and strategies. Because if we do not include the marginalized groups and uh, communities, then uh, we would not be able to have sustainable impacts. Well, uh, the challenges, the main challenge is many a times uh, there is a, a lack of interest or ownership from the government side and lack of awareness and skill uh, when it comes to locals. The major challenges are to convince the various stakeholders, the most prominent being the government, the farmers, the regulators, as well as the industry. So the impact of agriculture on environment was quite evident by the end of 20th century. And in 21st century, in the beginning, the government realized that we really need to cut down on the chemical fertilizers. And then the government started giving push towards nanoscience and nanometallurgies. So one party got convinced and this party was good enough to convince several other stakeholders. The remaining are farmers. So with farmers, we really need to work hard and convince them for taking up these technologies, especially for nanotechnologies, where they will have to apply only a few grams in 
uh, as a replacement of bags of uh, fertilizers say bag of a urea can be replaced by only a few gram of nano urea so to understand this kind of fact it will take some time for farmers so we need to convince the farmers for this kind of fact this will help the technology a lot and also will help in reducing ghg emission through agriculture the main problem with biofuels is its economic viability so what we need to do is not look at biofuel in isolation rather it should become one of the byproducts because it can be used for pyrolysis, it can be used for animal feed, you can extract nutraceuticals from this. So there are so many uses. So the concept is biofuels and biorefinery. You look into other platform chemicals, what will emerge from this alga. So you're killing two birds with one stone. One is you're making this entire process economically viable and the other is you're not generating any waste which otherwise can become another problem at a later date. I think that's the behavioral change we really need. Switch off the lights when you're moving out of your room. Switch on the uh, AC only when you need. These are the small things when you're going to a nearby place, uh, to a market. Why do you need to take your two-wheeler or a four-wheeler? Why can't we walk for 10 or 15 minutes? So these are the, some of the small things which we should be doing in our day-to-day -day life. And how do we make this as a habit in our daily routine? That is something which is important and this is the biggest challenge. We have to, as seniors, as parents, as teachers, this is what we should be teaching to our children and our fellow colleagues. Forestry sector is one of the biggest sector having opportunity to address net zero. And forestry sector, we, when I say that, it means not only forests, natural forests, but also the agroforestry. And through the efforts of the, our own work at, at Terry, we can, we can, we are in a position to convince number of states in India to have carbon neutrality policy where we can actually benefit the local communities, you benefit environment, and you sequester carbon in an unprecedented way. As a researcher, I believe that we should take a collaborative approach which includes a stakeholder consultation at grassroots level as well as with policy makers. This will help in documenting and coming up with recommendations from different stakeholders and that will be helping policy makers to develop up regulations and guidelines for climate finance or green finance. Innovation will be uh, the key uh, to address the challenges and uh, when I talk about innovation, I mean uh, technological innovation in terms of using uh, emerging technologies like biotechnologies, information technologies to address the challenge and also in terms of policy innovations, devising suitable incentive structures uh, and schemes for the farmers so as to promote sustainable uh, on-farm uh, crop residue management practices. So I feel that uh, taking small steps but concrete steps is key and uh, as a researcher we need more uh, open dialogue especially with the younger generation, with students and also engage with communities, marginalized groups, women's groups and uh, also make use of local indigenous knowledge that has been proved to be uh, quite useful in mitigating climate change impacts. As a researcher at Terry, I can play a unique role of bridging this gap between the government and the civil society. We can not only generate scientific data, but also build capacity and create awareness both uh, amongst the government officials and the civil society. As nanoscientists, we are trying to make all these technologies very safe to environment and human health. We are conducting tests in the lab, in greenhouses, as well as in the fields. Then, once these materials are proven safe at in-house level, we are also conducting trials at farmers' field. We are also convincing them, also convincing the farmers that there will be a great benefit, increased yield realized when they'll be using these nanotechnologies and biofertilizers, and they can safely reduce the application of chemical fertilizers.